so we have this uh, uh, lecture on uh, physical qualification of uh, electronics and uh, what is the role of this physics of failure the uh, module itself physics of failure module how is going to support the prognostics uh, and health management uh, especially the prognostic component of the uh, prognostics and health management uh, basically this is a course on risk based engineering and this is the fifth lecture of this module uh, on physics of failure and uh, in previous lecture we did see uh, how the virtual qualification is done and what are the advantages of virtual qualification that means uh, as part of the design or before the design itself the complete module was uh, virtually created and it was tested so it generated an input for the design now and once the design was ready uh, it was uh, it was fabrication went on and then fabrication it went on and they are again testing what are the insights they came on, came on and uh, how far our virtual model is close to the uh, close to the real time model that we created uh, and finally a learning one and second thing is um, how far we got the advantage of um, i would say digital twin of this board that is virtual board uh, virtual board and uh, um, how we are able to reduce the development time for the electronics so these are the and uh, in this lecture we will see the physical qualification uh, which comes once the board is developed so uh, we saw that we are all uh, focusing on remaining useful life uh, or you know um, time to failure whatever and then uh, uh, we have this pof approach uh, which is uh, uh, which is not serving as purpose for design uh, of the board uh, but is it is also serving uh, as a purpose uh, for root cause analysis for example um, if we our our um, uh, what is the virtual model is there what is the real time model of board is there if there are nothing uh, things are not working then we can find out the root cause of this mismatch and when this board enters into the plant then we can also understand what are the root causes of the root cause of the failure and then accordingly modify or update the design or update the loading condition or environmental condition so that the failure doesn't occur okay so root cause analysis uh, uh, um, the pof the way it support the root cause analysis uh, at micro level uh, is one of the spin off of uh, physics of failure uh, approach and of course as part of uh, prognostics and health management it uh, provides information um, it supports uh, the uh, application of this technique that is pof uh, on uh, giving the remaining useful life of course the another technique is data driven technique so we'll discuss that in the uh, in the next lecture on prognostics and health management but uh, in this lecture let us focus on uh, life consumption monitoring uh, damage accumulation which are rather known techniques uh, and then how prognostics uh, which is done for canary why it is called canary that also we'll discuss so um, so uh, one is virtual qualification other one is canary canary is something that there is a uh, there is a component or electronic board and we know ki in that package how solder joints they fail and uh, if we can develop a mechanism where before the actual failure occurs we have indication of um, solder joint uh, failure um, uh, a priori uh, so that so and that can be done by uh, using few of the solder joints uh, for uh, for the analysis of physics of failure or uh, uh, implementation of canary model so that uh, before the actual failure of the uh, solder balls happen we will be able to know and we will take the corrective action so first let us see the background uh, physical qualification uh, is a is a verification uh, strategy why we are calling it verification because once uh, it is this is done the electronic card or electronic it is it is out of the lab or testing environment and it goes into the field of course from field also we can use some input but it is uh, uh, it has gone into the um, open domain and uh, any failure is very expensive there so that means what message we get is 
these boards they should be tested a priori uh, simulating all the condition uh, and uh, all the synergies, uh, synergies of different loading conditions so that uh, we we are uh, having as far as possible laser surprises uh, when we when we when we are in the field okay uh, now here uh, the whatever the uh, uh, collision testing goes on uh, it happens at two level one is uh, elevated load frequency and at elevated uh, elevated load level itself elevated load frequency means the things are under uh, designed parameters are and, uh, we are maintaining that boundary but we are increasing the load frequency that means we are seeing more frequent loads that are acting onto the uh, board okay in, in elevated load levels the load itself can be increased though uh, and we can see what is the effect or how we precipitate the uh, data uh, so that any weakness in the system uh, precipitates to a level where correction corrective action uh, can be performed so uh, now when we do testing uh, of course the uh, in field condition the time is very large because it is operating under used condition or uh, you know uh, specific spec specified condition but then uh, uh, from the data coming from there it will be very slow so what we do in lab environment we uh, we have very short time and under that sh short time what we do is the stresses we increase and the time is short so in that short time we have to do testing so uh, there is a very key parameter in testing it is called uh, uh, acceleration factor so acceleration factor is nothing but ratio of time in the field divided by time in the test okay so now what we did is uh, uh, stresses we have increased here in the uh, during this time and here the stresses are less whether it is a loading or whether it is a material strength whatever so so um, we have increased the stresses and that's why uh, time in the field is nothing but a function of the kind of uh, uh, you know uh, loads that we have in the field and here kind of loads that we have in the test so obviously this so th that's why the acceleration factor will be more than one and uh, you know uh, because what we, we are trying to compress the whole scenario into a small time and that's how we get the uh, acceleration factor and accordingly all the tests are performed and this acceleration factor uh, and this inputs they come on recursive method either by experience or uh, uh, different testing or our past data uh, available on this and finally again this could be iterative process but some uh, so lot of science has been developed and now it is easy to develop the acceleration factor now uh, if we go a little uh, this thing so we have this um, uh, time uh, you know loading on the test l uh, uh, so l is the lifetime uh, of the component so sorry this is uh, so uh, this is the test condition time and this is this condition time time to failure whatever you can use condition testing condition so the model here is given here c is a uh, nothing c and b are material and geometry constant and then here e exponential model we have here over here so we have b again the constant and then we use voltage that uh, stress uh, generating parameter uh, we have the voltage here and the ratio of this during use condition and test condition and this is what the model we get acceleration factor we get here through using this model okay so what 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 it says is we should know b and uh, b factor uh, so that uh, and we should know voltage in use and voltage in a optimization can be a study can be done keeping in view the resource age how much uh, what should be the acceleration factor 2 3 4 whatever so uh, accordingly we can carry out the test during a compressed test i will say and uh, uh, to precipitate the uh, fault uh, you know in the system okay so uh, there is concept life consumption monitoring um, and this uh, say this is basically one of the part of uh, uh, physics of failure development of physics of failure model so how it works uh, it works by first having data uh, from on load uh, data 
and time domain data that we have here. Then we have failure model and then time available we get from here uh, keeping in view the geometric material and loading properties you know and the for damage assessment is done. So damage assessment is not, nothing but T I applied and T I available uh, okay. So that is and if uh, that is sub, uh, damage we are um, uh, thing we are doing but if suppose we have a linear um, uh, damage then we can see accumulation of T uh, applied upon T available time available and time we applied for this one. So we get the D total okay and then finally if we are if I to uh, if I have to come to uh, defining uh, T ML so then DF minus TD. So the this two I think the, these things we have been discussed in the next slide. So and then finally at the end of the day we get remaining useful life assessment okay. And similar things I have said and at the end of the day um, uh, what we try to see is cumulative damage and from cumulative damage we try to infer uh, the, uh, um, the life consumption uh, monitoring uh, parameters. So just now we have discussed the cumulative damage modeling how it happens the material degradation could be physical cracks and because you know one is the time so, uh, second thing is uh, that uh, damage which is taking place. So how we measure the damage level um, it, can, it could be length of the crack how it is evolving okay uh, it is a it is a very very uh, challenging assumption to that you know the crack was linear uh, because there is something called critical crack and all those things but before that uh, before the critical crack occurs uh, how the phenomena of crack is evolving that we can see here. And that for that we do develop a damage index. Damage index is nothing but time under uh, degradation condition. The time under degradation condition that means we are monitoring and how much time uh, has been spent uh, for the ith, ith condition. And then time applied is uh, time to failure. That means first, uh, first uh, uh, it was evolving or degradation taking place and for what is the time available now after uh, coming to a certain point. Uh, so these two will uh, give us damage index okay so uh, so uh, what is the damage index it will it will go on uh, uh, yeah, it will show a trend here and from that we we can we should be able to make out how uh, much we are available from based on the uh, uh, available uh, uh, we are the how much uh, is the severity thing coming over a period of time in terms of damage you know and having done that, sub, if we have a linear model uh, assumption, uh, assumption of linear model, then then the damage to date, damage to date, uh, that is this factor can be uh, uh, can be nothing but summation of ith event for applied as well as available ratio time to applied, and we will be able to date how much is the damage has taken place, precluding the catastrophic aspect or uh, uh, assuming that we are not nowhere near the critical crack length because after that it becomes a catastrophic fail, uh, failure. We are approaching a catastrophic failure. Uh, so these are the assumption and this with this at least a good part is done like PHM uh, how far we are from the uh, away from the failure that is prognostic distance kind of phenomena uh, can be modeled. But there are two major assumptions that we are, uh, we are not, uh, we are not into catastrophic reason or critical length reason because then there is no uh, relation between time uh, and, uh, and the level of damage that has taken place. We have to be very careful on this. Uh, further, the average damage rate we can obtain uh, like this: the summation of applied that summation factor that is we, we are earlier, and then how much uh, time applied time is there these two will give us the uh, damage rate average damage rate and once we have the estimate of average damage, damage rate then we can have uh, uh, df and td we have seen in our previous model and uh, you can obtain t or less remaining useful lifetime so how much is we are away from uh, the uh, end uh, condition 
So you saw these things getting developed on a, uh, uh, the only, uh, only assumption here is we are able to monitor the damage level periodically and that assessment is accurate enough and accurate enough to tell us that we are not in the end state condition that is catastrophic reason um, because catastrophic failure may not apply to many condition but certain condition where uh, we are handling energy systems and things like that then uh, then uh, um, the crack propagates in a very short time uh, especially after critical crack length okay so this is some interesting aspect uh, canary approach to prognostics you know uh, here why we are discussing canary approach is one of the one of the very um, i will not say uh, popular approach but it has been used in um, uh, in many field in the laboratory environment uh, what is canary approach canary the name itself is uh, uh, has been uh, there from the mining scene you know in earlier times uh, 18th to 20th century uh, the canary is nothing but a bird. The bird was located in the mines and uh, on strategic locations and when its color changes, it was, a, uh, it was a signal for poisonous gas inside the mine or uh, especially carbon monoxide uh, gas which is uh, de uh, detrimental to the health and it can cause fatalities also. So miners will get an early indication of any incipient uh, risk or in incipient failure or in incipient fatalities. So corrective action could have been taken. But this practice was continued and if you can see one beautiful bird canary was here and uh, it is located. In Sometime the miners will carry this bird uh, in a cage along with them uh, to know of any, um, any danger, uh, you know, postulated danger or whatever it is. So, to understand how it relates to the electronics, how in electronics we get an early indication. So, this is an electronic board. It is just for explaining this, I have, um, I have made this uh, figure. Uh, so, let us say this is the normal shoulder joint, you know, its thickness and all, uh, it, it will be, uh, it will be uh, width. Uh, I have shown thickness, I could not show. So, uh, it is a sort of uh, bigger dimension we have over here. But when I want to uh, have a canary approach on the board for early warning, I will design a solar joint uh, which will be of lesser signature so that current when it flows, uh, the stresses will be less here. But here it will be uh, due to resistance, higher resistance, it will be. So it is, we can understand from the first principle how uh, our electronic board uh, for our solar joint uh, phenomena, uh, which is uh, one of the concern for 40 failure, uh, we can design a board like this over here and try to know, uh, get early warning of failure uh, and how uh, these canaries are work or they are of, in different way they are used. So uh, there are uh, three uh, type of use of this canary. One is called expandable, expandable canaries. That means physical dimension are tailored to get a uh, early warning of the failure. Then it is sensor canaries. They basically are basically nothing but monitoring devices that track measurable change in the uh, target system that have been correlated to failure. So basically sensor canaries, they give some signal, some calibration is done for the early warning of the failure. Uh, failure. And then third one is the conjugate pair. Conjugate pair is our, our monitor sensor to monitor a stress pair uh, whose device established pairing correlated. So that means uh, that there is always a pairing is used, conjugate pair they call, two pairs and then they are correlated. And accordingly we declare them, uh, the, once the correlation is developed, then, uh, then we say, okay, we'll get an early warning of failure because this conjugate is informing us about the degradation which is going on uh, on a um, canary uh, thing um, before that actual uh, component of the pair. <coughs> uh, so, so canary provides early warning and that is a uh, great deal uh, when you, you talk about the, uh, our uh, industrial environment. Okay? Uh, the distance between 
the the uh, time to failure uh, i'll show you the next slide and the canary failure distribution uh, these two distances they are called prognostic distance so let us see how what we get by canary based approach to prognostics you know, you know so here what prognostic distance is nothing but first is the canary it has got its own distribution over here then we have the actual device its distribution is here so if it is mean to mean uh, if we take uh, consider that this is a normal distribution then we this pd 50 50 that means we are at the mean point here we are also here also so b 50 50 Uh, that means 50% population we are covering and this is called uh, the prognostic distance using this method if i am uh, if i am want to be little con uh, con uh, this thing conservative then i will start this extreme okay and uh, i will use this prognostic distance so there are different ways you look at the uh, um, uh, this thing so here it is uh, what we have this uh, distribution of Uh, failure probability uh, probability density function over here it is lower bound it is upper bound so here it is a 5% bound uh, here it is a 95% bound and we have different uh, matrix i would say 50 50 matrix 99 50 matrix 5 0 one matrix 1% we have said here and 99 1 0 one matrix so this is used and this formulation is used one is Uh, ft small ft uh, and rct is for the uh, canary and for other actual model so if probability that tc will be more than uh, this one uh, is is gives us ft rt uh, it uh, that is a uh, canary failure failure probability so uh, it is defined by what is the canary failure probability when tc becomes more than ts <coughs> so this is a uh, simple uh, simple model for giving canary failure probability over here now let us see how an actual board canary can be implemented so let us say this is a package electronic package uh, it's a peculiar uh, uh, commercial name is 192 io ball grid arrays with sacrificial contacts depicted in red box so you know these are the canary the you know, corners have been used for canary contacts and they are called sacrificial that means we are not using them for the operation of this uh, package but we are using it for uh, as a canary now you can see the dimension of this thing is same and all uh, so now let's say uh, our objective was that uh, this uh, location the cooling was not getting uh, was effective on this location so they will definitely give early early warning of failure if there is a situation so this point itself becomes the canary points okay so total uh, three in each corner so the total 12 corners it can be calibrated to give early warning of failure of the uh, ball grid array uh, uh, for this uh, 192 io input output uh, board and uh, now let us look at the condition uh, because it has it was a Uh, uh, real time modeling that was done so if the diagonal distance uh, the length is concerned uh, for 40 uh, life in because uh, ball grid array na or there there the mechanism is 40 failure so 16.97 and uh, functional solder it is 14.88 the this, this is a physical dimension required for modeling a uh, 40 failure advanced integration uh, on the uh, electronic package for the board coefficient of thermal cte so coefficient of thermal expansion plays a critical role in 40 40 and fracture because mismatch in uh, cte uh, will lead to delamination due to 40 failure so 14 part per million per degree kelvin is the board on coefficient for the component it is 10 part per million so these two figures and then finally again this is a test condition it was test condition was between minus 55 to 125 degree you can see both extreme condition you can look at this board in siberian region and 125 is of course if it is a industrial environment then 50 60 is, uh, uh, the temperature is possible and uh, so, uh, so to be conservative basis we have taken 125 uh, 
and 15 minutes of dwell, point, dwell time. That means for 15 minutes it will remain at that temperature. So that the cycling phenomena is induced and more robust. So it was found that 2200 cycle uh, to failure. Now if I convert to the um, uh, 40 life of functional interconnect would be estimated is a 31,000 per cycle. Okay, and based on this estimate, the PD 50-50 uh, estimates are 900 cycle, and for use condition, if the temperature is between 20 and 60, which is the real time case, uh, and dwell time is 480 minutes uh, dwell, the PD is, is comes to 22 800 point because we have acceleration factor. So, so you can see there that we got this time acceleration time we are getting around uh, so many cycles for various so uh, we found a beautiful way to test the things and uh, even if it is at 20000 so we'll get time to failure early warning uh, of this ball grid area uh, failure so with this now we come to the uh, overview of this board live consumption monitoring we have seen canary bass uh, approach was discussed here uh, we okay and prognostic distance, the concept we understood, identification of failure sites, modeling of the thermal and test condition and results. Uh, we discussed that example just to get a feel of it, you know, how uh, the, the component on the board or the provision on the board itself can be used as canary. So with this, we complete the physics of uh, failure lecture. If I have to sum up this lecture, uh, uh, the way we started from the first talk, it is a science based approach, uh, how far it is used in the, in, in the industry, but in long run it appears to be a promising approach uh, and uh, it has to come out from uh, R&D domain or in elite laboratory from domain to uh, the industrial domain. Um, and mostly it appears uh, as of now it is, it is tailored to electronic component. But uh, we are aware that for mechanical component or for like for VR. Uh, under uh, you know inadequate lubrication, uh, then uh, you know uh, failure of uh, uh, piston rings. All those models are uh, available. Uh, only thing is they have to be fine tuned for mechanical component. Uh, POF uh, in POF uh, the the virtual simulation is a powerful technique uh, which matches with the uh, you can digital twin uh, approach. Um, we are a virtual design or virtual uh, qualification had been there for electronics for a long time. Digital twin is a uh, relatively new term. Like uh, for, for nuclear plant, simulator was there uh, uh, is a very old concept uh, wherein we uh, with a person sitting on the console uh, has a feeling that he is sitting in the control room of the plant, he operates the reactor, shut down the reactor. So uh, these are the two front runners uh, and, uh, for digital twin. Uh, role of physical testing has been discussed. POF along with the data driven approach and along with given AIML thing becomes the ideal component for prognostics and health management which we will discuss in next lecture. These are the references I have given at the end of uh, the presentation. Since uh, this chapter is from my book, all the references is there and in between if you have seen some number uh, quotation, uh, uh, citing some numbers. Uh, the, the, those references can be uh, found here for, for further details. So with this, there are 49 references. With this, we come to the end of this module that is physics of failure module as part of risk-based engineering. Thank you very much.